that and staff can let us know if we can do that later this afternoon if the if the um, opportunity arises but with that um, we'll just get going um, my name is Carol Kwan I'm the current chair of the Board of Community Services with us today are Vice Chair Terry Griffin and board member Steve Spillman Logan Pitts and Madonna Cruz um, I would also like to introduce our host, Mary Lou Nichols and Elisa Rolson, and would um, like to let people know that they will be helping us during the meeting. At this point, if the panelists and the presenters could silence their cell phones and mute their microphones, if not speaking, that would be very helpful. Members of the public joining this meeting will have their webcams and microphones muted. If you're phoning in to join the meeting and you choose to speak during the public comment section, for privacy concerns, the host will rename you to caller and only show the last four digits of your phone number. Please also know that the City of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruptions and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully, or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. And with that, Madam Host, would you like to explain how the public comment section of today's meeting will take place? Just one moment. We're having some issues with getting, oh, there we are. Um, Madonna Cruz was not showing up as a panelist and I wanted to make sure that we had a quorum for sure. So now that she's in place at each agenda item, the item will be presented. The chair will ask for board comments or questions and then at the appropriate time, open the floor for public comments. The host will lower all hands until the public comments item is open. Once the chair has called for public comment, the chair will ask the public to raise their hand if they wish to speak on this specific agenda item. Those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on those who have raised their hands. Public comment is limited to three minutes and a courtesy timer will appear on the screen. Thank you, Chair Quant. Thank you, Marilo. And with that, I call this the August 25th, 2021 meeting of the Board of Community Services to order at 4.10 in the afternoon. Due to the provisions of the Governor's Executive Order 92520 and 92920, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the Health Officer of the County of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the Board of Community Services members will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom. Board members and staff are participating from remote locations and practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. And with that, may we have a roll call? Yes. Please respond when I call your name. Chair Quant. Here. Vice Chair Griffin. Here. Board Member Spillman? Here. Board Member Pitts? I'm here. Board Member Cruz? Board Member Spence? And Board Member Rich? I do see uh, Board Member Cruz in attendance, but I'm unable to hear her. Board member Cruz, are you able to hear us? Well, she is in attendance. Um, so let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of board member Spence and board member Rich. Thank you. Madonna, can you get a, give us a thumbs up if you can hear me? Madonna, thumbs up. So I'm a little concerned that Madonna's uh, audio is turned off. I'll give her a call. Thank you so much. May I proceed regardless? You may. 
Thank you so much. At this point, I'd like to open the floor for public comments on non-agenda items. This is the time when a person may address the board on members not listed on the agenda, but are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction of this board. Do we have any public comments for non-agenda items? We received no email public comments. Um, I do see one hand raised. Can we go to that? Yes, we can. It's gonna be just a moment. Um, we'll need Mary Lou to unmute the gentleman and then I can start the public timer. All good. Kirsten, I spoke at the last meeting and I just wanted to correct uh, make a correction to the minutes, if that's okay. Is this an appropriate uh, venue for that an appropriate time? Why don't you okay. go ahead with your public I'm comment? I'm going to assume that. Okay. Uh, when I spoke last week, last month, uh, the I was speaking about pickleball at Howarth Park. And uh, the minutes for the meeting for last month indicated that I said I was wanting to convert two thirds of Howarth Park to pickleball courts. And that is not what I said. So I just want to correct that. I said two or three tennis courts to pickleball courts. So not two thirds of Howarth Park's tennis courts, but it's two or three. Uh, but more importantly, uh, I had said that this desire to make the conversion would be financed by the pickleball players at no cost to the city. I didn't use exactly those words, but that was very much my meaning and that didn't get reflected in the minutes entry either. So I would just like, it doesn't matter to me if the minutes are actually corrected, but I would just like the board to know that we are not asking the city to pay for this. We are saying we will raise the funds for this. And uh, I had asked for perhaps an agenda item in the future so this could be discussed in greater detail or to us to, as to who to talk to. So that's the end of my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. One moment and I'll check for other speakers. I see no other public comments at this time. Thank you. With that, we will move on to the approval of two sets of minutes. Hopefully you've had a chance to review both the Roseland Creek Master Plan, special meeting minutes, and also our last regular meeting um, from August 25. Are there any corrections to those minutes? I'll offer the correction that Mr. Kirst uh, volunteered of uh, public comment under number three on the 20 the meeting on the 28th to change it from two thirds to two or three. Terry, did you have something else? No, I was going to make the same uh, recommendation that we approve them as corrected by Mr. Kirst. Thank you. Mary Lou, when you make those corrections, when you put two or three, could you also include the total number of courts and whether or not any um, are already pickleball courts? And that would give us um, information for us to do our own higher mathematic equations. I believe I'm only supposed to record the comments at this point. So I will definitely make that correction. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And Chair Kwan will follow up with you on the exact amount of pickleball versus tennis at those at those sites. And before we um, before you roll into approval, I just want to check back in to make sure that we also still have our quorum before we go to the minutes approval. 
Um, check, I'll check back in with our host to see if we can get uh, board member Cruz back on or uh, maybe recommend uh, skipping over that for a bit until we can get her back on for approval. And I think she might be, um, let me just double check. Madonna, are you uh, the number ending in 4799? If so, can you raise your hand or dial, dial star nine? All right, I'm getting confirmation from host Nichols that 4799 is Madonna. So I will go ahead and enable her speaking permission so she is able to talk. Madonna, your permissions, um, you're unmuted and you're able to speak. Can you say Hi, something? This, is Mad this is Madonna. Thank you. Okay, so with that, um, welcome Cynthia Rich. We um, we are up to item five in the agenda, and we're going to hold off and do proper introductions of both you and everyone else on the board next month when we uh, when we start from scratch. But welcome, um, you. you you you've missed the previews, but the main features have not begun. So Thank so you. welcome to welcome to the show. Thanks, so um, much. On that note, we are going to move forward to Director Update. Um, Deputy Director Santos, you have the floor. Chair Quant, uh, I, I'm happy to provide Director Updates. I also would like to suggest that we can move back now that we have a quorum to item four and also pick up item five, um, if you'd like to do it in that order. Thank you so much for that. Can <laughs> we have approval of the minutes from the July 2 1 and July 2 8, 2021 meetings? Any further corrections? Seeing none, we'll put those aside now and move on to item five upcoming events and reports on accomplished events. And for that, Deputy Director Santos, the floor is yours. Okay, and did I hear an approval of the minutes from you uh, and from the board? Or are you going to uh, postpone mm -hmm. those? Um, I will. I will move that we approve the minutes. So. Thank you. I'll second. <laughs> All those Thank in you. favor, hands up. Aye. Perfect. Aye. Wonderful, and uh, so all of you should have received our upcoming and accomplished events uh, information. I just wanted to highlight a couple things as I usually do uh, and uh, remind you that we also have our interim recreation deputy director, Jeff Tibbetts available if there are any questions about recreational activities as we move along. Uh, but for upcoming events, I uh, wanted to remind the board that uh, the Creekside renaming request that, uh, that this board approved will be going to council on uh, Tuesday, August 31st as a report item, and you're welcome to attend. And then also from an accomplished events standpoint, we want to uh, call out the Rural Cemetery. Uh, they sold out all of their tours, and um, that, is, that was held on August 14th, and I hear it was fabulous. Um, that is all I have for accomplished and upcoming events. Thank you. Shall we move on to director updates? Thank you, Chair Quant. So I have a few updates. Uh, one of them is to tag along with my uh, update on the rural cemetery to let you all know that um, if you haven't visited the rural cemetery yet, there is a series of very large eucalyptus in the back of the, well, I call it the back of the cemetery. And these eucalyptus are on the county of Sonoma's property. And uh, we've been working with them. And they uh, are happy to report that they are moving forward with a contract to remove these eucalyptus. They are dangerous and leaning and dropping large limbs. And eucalyptus do tend to 
uh, be a dangerous tree to have around. And if they fell, uh, they're well over 100 feet would cause, you know, it would cause a lot of damage. So I'm happy to report that these trees will be removed um, as soon as the county runs through their bidding process to get a removal. Um, and that uh, we also want to look to more native trees in our historic cemetery, the rural cemetery there. And um, I just wanted to let you know that's going on. And in the next couple of months, if you see some activity happening out there, that is what it is. And we're happy to give you a little more details. And I'm, I'm sure that our um, number one volunteer out there, the chair, has more information about that as well. Um, I also wanted to update you that uh, we have begun an RFP, a request for proposal process to bring on a design firm to reimagine Fremont Park downtown. The city council has had um, an interest and uh, has directed staff to um, emphasize and prioritize downtown projects. And so we, uh, we have received, uh, I think eight or nine proposals, I can't remember at this time, but we're in the process of negotiating with her a final uh, uh, agreement that we will take forward to council soon to have their approval. And that will be going through its uh, typical three-year master planning process where we meet with the community and stakeholders, and then we'll be bringing it back to this board for uh, review. And we'll also, of course, be including you all along the way. So that's a fun project that's starting up. Um, the Roseland Creek Community Park Master Plan that this board heard in a special meeting will be going to the City Council on September 28th. And uh, that is a that is going to be a large report item to the council and it's expected that the chair or an appointee from the board attend with staff uh, to represent this particular item so i'm looking forward to that going forward as well uh, i wanted to give you a little bit of an update that the that the the city is responding to the increase in COVID in the county and we are looking at still continuing a work from home model for staff as needed until October 1st. Although I know there's an interest in getting this board back to a hybrid situation, we are working on that. But at the same time, from a perspective of uh, having staff go out to different uh, in-person meetings, we're trying to turn those into virtual meetings where we can in order to restrict our activity. But we are still very much modeling, um, going to model the board after what we're doing at City Council and are still moving forward with our hybrid process. But I wanted you to know from a staff perspective, we are targeting October 1st to return to work uh, more than working from home. Um, let's see, I also wanted to give you a little heads up about uh, the drought. The Howarth Park lake levels are going to be lower than usual. In fact, if you've ever been to Howarth Park, I've never seen it where you can actually walk out to the to the island in the middle. And uh, that's something you can do now because the lake levels are really low. Normally we uh, have another influx of water, but we're holding off this year um, in, in respect for the drought so that we're not using additional, additional water. And uh, our recreation staff uh, tell us that they usually uh, close the boathouse on the lake at the end of September. So that we're gonna keep an eye on it. And uh, there is a possibility it might have to close early, but we, we're hopeful that it can stay open. That was as of Tuesday, so. <laughs> Things, things may have changed by now, but that's what I heard on Thursday that we're trying to keep it open despite the lake levels, um, uh, but that we might have to keep an eye on it and there is a possibility it could close early. Um, and then we've had, just to let you know, we have had some um, of our uh, permit holders or people uh, renting picnic reservations from the city call to cancel uh, because of COVID or smoke related or the, um, smoke from all the fires around the Northern, Northern California uh, levels. So for a variety of reasons, we've had uh, a few more cancellations than usual. And um, we also heard a presentation from uh, council had a goal setting session last night. And um, while I don't have it right in front of me here, all of their goals, but um, uh, from what I could tell last night, it was very similar to their, sim to their goals they've had in previous years where homelessness and housing are right up there at the very top. And so we should be receiving 
uh, from the city's consultant a list of those council goals and priorities, and I will forward those to you as soon as I receive them. And with that, that's the end of my director updates. Thank you, Jen. Um, do we have Jack Tibbetts on the line if there are recreational questions from the board? Yes, he is Great. available. So um, questions from the board, either uh, to the parks end or the recreation end for Jen or Jeff Tibbetts. Um, hands? Seeing no hands. Um, uh, the mention of um, Rosen Creek Master Plan going to City Council on September 28th. I know that Logan, you've been out there with the mayor. Um, I'm doing dances with my city council person to get her out there. It's proving challenging finding a time that will work for both me and my city council person, Victoria Fleming, but an endeavor well worth pursuing. Um, I'm hoping either we as appointees or staff will get the majority of city council out on site. Um, as we all know, looking at a park in three dimensions means a lot more than looking at it on a piece of paper or a Zoom screen. Um, and I do plan on attending the meeting on the 28th and would love a reminder from staff to go out to, to us all in that regard. Thank you so much. We are moving on to number seven scheduled items. And um, I have the pleasure of introducing James Castro, who is the head of parks maintenance to give us a parks maintenance update. And James, it says here you are the parks superintendent. And I'm just going to turn it over to you. Hi, James. I'm going to turn it over to you and um, uh, board. I'm hoping that we can have a healthy uh, exchange of information and contacts and uh, uh, comments and questions with James after his presentation. Good enough? Take it away, James. Good afternoon, Chair Quant, Vice Chair Griffin, board members. Uh, yes, I am James Castro, and I am the superintendent that oversees parks. I've uh, been with the city for 14 years, uh, but I'm brand new into this position, only four months old. So I'm still learning a lot. Uh, I've got a lot that I have learned up to this point, and I'm very excited that there's actually a board of people here that uh, are advocates for recreational parks. So thank you for inviting me. I have got a small presentation. It's five slides. Um, it's not... Uh, it's not exciting uh, information, but I think it's important for this information to be relayed to the board, uh, specifically what's going on in park maintenance right now. So we'll get into it. Next slide, please. So here's our staffing. In 2008, park maintenance had 57 employees. And this was a time when parks was thriving. We had special projects crews. We had our own mowing crew, an island crew, a tree crew. Um, and today we're, we're at 23 employees. So none of those special projects crews exist. Um, this, this happened after the, the recession into a little bit of a downturn. And so uh, we're making do with what we have now. If you see that the national average for park staff is 16 and a half acres per full-time employee, uh, city of Santa Rosa, we, we cover 45 per employee. So it's, it's quite a bit different uh, than it once was for parks maintenance to be in with the national average we would need an additional 40 maintenance workers added to our staffing which um you know it it, it causes a little bit of angst amongst amongst staff and you know we're, we are trying to figure it out but th th this is the reality of what we're dealing with i put a, a that, that bottom bullet point there i put in to represent if there are 73 acres of median and roadside landscaping that in the last couple of years, park maintenance staff has had to take over. Prior to that, it was part of a landscaping contract that the city had, and the city was interested in soliciting bids for new contractor to come in. And the landscape and roadside, uh, the median and the roadside landscaping was not adopted as part of that contract. So right now, park staff is taking care of it. Next slide, please. 
I think that this is important. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion about, you know, the reorg that took place a couple of years back. Uh, everybody knows that there was a separation between recreation and parks, um, but really we were separated into three, three different uh, divisions. It was recreation, now parks planning and parks maintenance. And what, what this organizational chart doesn't show is that assistant city manager, Jason Nutt oversees much more than this. I was just simply trying to display for you all um, what, what Parks is dealing with now. I, the park maintenance reports to the Deputy Director of Field Services and uh, the Parks Planning reports to the Deputy Director of Parks. Next slide, please. The water reduction parks. So we are in compliance with the stage three restrictions. We've made 20% cuts across the whole park system with the exception of community parks and sports fields. We're continuing to irrigate those regularly to support our outdoor spaces. And as you'll see, although that the spray grounds are allowed during the stage three, uh, in respect for the drought, the city is not turning on the spray ground or the splash pad at Prince Gateway Park. I do think it's important that uh, the public knows that as part of our permit with the county to have the splash pad, we actually have to exercise the system at a minimum of once a month. So you may see it on randomly, um, but it is closed uh, as, a, as a feature to the public. Um, all drinking fountains and hydration stations are nor in no normal operation. Next slide, please. Parks Volunteer Program. So Parks is gonna be working on revitalizing the Parks Volunteer Program. Obviously this program already exists. It's existed for years. Uh, we work very closely with recreation, um, but the, the take home from this one is that we are really trying to, to bring back the volunteer cleanup day once a month in, in parks and around parks uh, all across the city in every district. Um, and you know, hopefully this will get a little bit of momentum behind it and we'll be able to pull in um, a lot of the community to, to help us with our parks. Because really, um, you know, if, if the public is gonna sit around and wait for the city to, to fix the parks problems, they're, they're never gonna stop waiting. We really need the public to be involved and hoping that the, the revitalization of this program will, will be a, a bigger draw for the public. Next slide, please. This is new in park maintenance. Uh, we've created a parks maintenance at srcity.org email address. Uh, the, the plan is to create signage that will go into all the parks, um, letting people know that they can get a hold of park maintenance staff at this email address. Well, I'll, we will include the, the phone number that's already out there, the 3770 number. Um, but this is, this is beginning to roll out. This, this email address is live now, the public can send their requests to this email address. Um, and we are uh, working on the design of the signs that will be placed in parks. Next slide, please. Ta-da, easy. Any questions? Let's hear them. So James, I don't think there's anything easy. Yeah, unfortunately. And, uh, I'm hoping um, both Jen, who has years of perspective, and all of the board members will weigh in and we can have um, an active discussion about how this board, as well as the city, can um, nurture our parks better. Um, I see Logan's got his hand raised. I would love to be informal at this. I don't want to go through a set order. Uh, I'll call on you, raise your hand, and we'll get to everybody. Logan. Thank you, Carol. James, thanks for the presentation. Um, two questions for you. Are those signs going to be in Spanish and English? Uh, th that hasn't been discussed yet, but I think that's a great idea. So, okay. yes. Hi yeah. I highly yeah. encourage it to be bilingual. Um, that's great. And then those cleanup days, is that like a citywide day or does each park have a different day? Um, no, it'll be a citywide, and it will be put on our, our website and, and advertised on the, the different networks that we have. But the, the goal is one park a month in different districts each month. So it's not a park in each district each month. Uh, the goal is one, one a month. 
so it'd be like a one day a month for seven parks in each is that what you mean in each each of the seven council districts no i i mean the opposite it'll be one park a month and throughout the year each district will get hit got it okay so each month will be a separate district and separate Correct. park within that district okay yes. That's so, great. Yeah, I was talking with the mayor and I, he, that might have been what he referenced that different council members might want to come out and do those cleanups. So that's, that would that's be great. wonderful. Yeah, we'd love to see council members out there. They'll get they'll get more volunteers, maybe. So, OK, that's all great. Thanks, James. Thank you. Gary. Thank you. Thanks, James, for the presentation. Just a couple quick questions. Um, actually, Logan. Uh, asked my Spanish question, so thank you for bringing that up, Logan. Um, would the park cleanup, the once a month park cleanup, preclude um, neighborhood groups from doing park cleanups, perhaps on a more frequent basis? Absolutely not, yeah, absolutely not. Uh, you know, and, that's, and that really is the hope. I would love to hear from 68 people from the public saying they want to adopt a park and how can the city help us? Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Okay. Um, the city's gonna organize a formal park cleanup once a month. Um, and as I was talking to board member Pitts is that we would love for council to come to that. We would love for you guys to come to that. Um, hopefully it'll be a big event. And I know that this is not, this is not a new idea where we haven't created this, but maybe we're gonna add a little flair. Maybe we're gonna have a DJ. Maybe we're gonna do things a little bit differently. Um, I, I would love to see this experience happen uh, in, citywide with, with everybody taking pride in their parks. Uh, well, count me in for cleanup slash party. I love that idea. <laughs> Wonderful, thank um, you. So my other question then is in terms of timing, do you have any sense of when um, neighborhood groups might be able to start forming for um, park adoption. And I, I'm thinking specifically of a case in my own neighborhood. And I think you're probably well aware of this situation. We have a, a neighbor who is very proactive um, in maintaining our park, picking up trash, painting the fence and so forth. And I, I think she's starting to generate some interest in the neighborhood to join her, which is so wonderful and exciting. But um, I'm just wondering in terms of the timing of formally forming these groups um, with the city. Do you have a sense of that? We're ready now. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm fired up. I would love for this to happen immediately. We're, we're still in the, the process of creating the parks a month, but what, what we're talking about as far as you know, small groups in neighborhood parks, we're, we're set up. We, we're work, we work very closely with recreation to have these programs already in place. And I, I love hearing about people that are actually doing it already. Great. And then one last question. Um, in terms of the use of the email or the phone number for contacting parks maintenance, is that in, go, going to still be in addition to My Santa Rosa? And yes. if My Santa Rosa will still be used, do you have a preference in terms of what folks use? So the, the idea behind the email address is that it gives us the ability internally to have every one of our park maintenance staff get a ping on their phone once an email is sent in. So they can respond pretty quickly should there be an urgent matter. We still want there to be somebody that they can talk to and available over the phone, which is why the phone number is there. You can talk to a real person. We just understand that not everybody likes calling. A lot of people like to send emails or have it. And it it's actually makes it easier on our end when we create work orders. If people send in an email, our, our administrative staff doesn't have to interpret their language we can actually just take their email and plug it into our work order system and then spit it out. And so that's our hope. Our preference would be the email address. Okay. But yeah, the, the phone number is available. All right, thank you. Those are all of my questions. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I just wanted to jump in there real quick and say that I love that uh, email as well. It's gonna be good for internal staff as well to use. And just to clarify that we are super excited to get the volunteer program back and running, but we will be working internally to make sure that we're meeting county health code requirements and not gathering. So, uh, but it, I shouldn't, I, it shouldn't preclude you from getting excited and getting interested and sending your interest in so that we can be ready once we can meet and back in person. Uh, Jen, thank you for that clarification. Uh, COVID, I don't want to say it's going to damper 
the enthusiasm, but it is something that we have to continue to filter things through. Also, the first time I heard the use of the term work order, I thought somebody asked for something, boom, a work order happens and it and it takes place. A work order, James, Jim, please correct me, is simply documentation for further information. It is not necessarily a traditional work order where someone is being directed to go and take care of what someone is bringing to the city's attention. You are correct, yes. It allows us to collect data and we can run reports that say we have the same problem at a park over and over and over. Well, it needs a little bit more attention than just maintenance workers showing up per se. So it's, it's data tracking for us. What, before I move forward, will every email be answered in one form or another? Uh, our goal is that anybody that contacts the city that wants a call back, that we can provide that. So if, is that the question you're asking? That sounded like a qualified yes. Um, <laughs> if, if nothing else, will they get a non-auto response? Thank you for your concern so that they know that somebody from park maintenance actually read their email? Yeah, so our current, our current asset management system is old and antiquated and we're, we're in the final stages of bringing our new system into the into the works it's actually called city works um, and that system is going to give us a lot more capabilities than our current system has but this current system doesn't have the means of doing anything other than an automatic your has it has been received um, but i will address that question and come up with a solution we're coming closer to the yes I'm looking for. Thank you, uh, Steve. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, welcome, Cynthia. Uh, uh, as you may know, I have been the rookie on the board since the first of the year. And I, now I guess I'm promoted to sophomore, but I'm guessing you'll find out quickly that I'm on a learning curve that's straight up and you probably know more about parks in the city than I do. Uh, so here goes a, a, a rookie question. Uh, Mr. Castro, your second slide was uh, eye-opening, to say the least, for someone who was not familiar with it. Of course, I looked at it a few weeks ago, and I was trying to wonder, and this is a question not just for you, but for anybody who has uh, uh, better perspective and experience, maybe it's Carol, Terry, Jen, um, why are we looking at these numbers? Is this a budget issues? Is it uh, priorities have changed? Or can you kind of give me the overall view about why the parks are in this or staffing is kind of in this situation? I think um, it's all of the above. I think that uh, we, we are being forced to look at our budget and the reductions that we need to make in, in park maintenance. That's been challenging for us, the separation from recreation and the further split within parks. And we're, we're asking, we're being asked to look at how to redu reduce services. And so when we hear about the weeds around the city and the different things that, you know, the, the parks that aren't being cleaned up, uh, the council's priorities are not park maintenance. And so we use internal resources to take care of what council's priorities are. And unfortunately, when we look at these numbers, um, it paints the clear picture on, you know, why we're not tending to our parks the way that we are. People don't come work for the parks department because they want to get rich and famous. They, they do it because they love what they do. They love being in parks and taking care of the outdoor spaces. And it's a very close family of people that work here. And when we hear about the complaints and how things are looking and why parks is, are the way that they are, nobody, nobody's more frustrated than, than park maintenance staff because these are their space, they love these spaces. And in 2008, the parks got to feel that love. And now we're in a position where we're in medians and cutting weeds and taking care of other things that uh, have, have pulled us physically out of parks. So these numbers demonstrate why that is. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Uh, as you know, uh, this board just recommended to city council 
uh, to create an additional park. So you're going to, if the city council agrees with our recommendation, uh, it appears you're going to have even more work to do. Yeah, and, and this is not this is not new to uh, city staff, and it's not unique to parks. If there's a new facility added, facility maintenance has to take care of it without additional resources. Same way, more acreage is added, and we're expected to maintain them with the resources we have. We would love to be excited. We would love it. I mean, these are new parks. They're shiny things. Um, but we have to work out the logistics of how to maintain those. And, you know, we've got a lot of parks that already exist that are being neglected. Okay. Well, thank you for your dedication and creativity. You are welcome. Thank you. Cynthia, I, I saw your hand up. Uh, did you still have a question? No, actually, that was my question. And so it's been covered. Thank you. Great. Um, so, Jen, can I put you on the spot and ask you to find some of the silver linings or some of the... Um, it, it, St Steve mentioned the elephant that I've known has been in the room. I think we've all known has been in the room of the um, disparity between the amount of park space we have and the shortcoming in staff, which we've been discussing in Board of Community Services for as long as I've been there. Um, from your seat, is the picture as bleak as what I'm now picturing in my head? I know, I, it's, it's, it's hard when you think of it in the terms of we really just simply do not, it's black and white, we simply do not have the maintenance staff needed to care for the city we created. And when you look at the general plan, the general plan specifies, you, you know, we will build this many parks over this many years to support the growing neighborhoods that we have so that new neighborhoods have parks. Um, but from a budgetary perspective, we have not kept up with the maintenance staff that are required to take care of those. And in 2008, just nationwide, not just this city alone, a lot of park and rec uh, departments, especially maintenance, were just you know, disseminated like ours, ours was really significantly reduced. Uh, we, you know, on a good day, we had 14 maintenance staff. And uh, with James coming on there, I, I feel like there is a silver lining and there is a recognition last night at council about how much uh, the council is putting on staff and a recognition that uh, sometimes their desires, their general plan statements don't really match up with what we're doing. So I think being able, the silver lining to me is educating council at, at bringing this back to the board to recognize that there, it is here, it exists. We need to deal with it as a community and as a, as a group. And uh, we didn't have James position for two years. So we're starting to build slowly, but surely, but uh, with a careful eye on what council's uh, gonna do with the budget, uh, because that's certainly, unfortunately, one of the first places uh, that we go. Uh, for that. And, and we are also on the other side of that being cautious with what we do with parks um, and slowing the pace on brand new parks versus parks that have already been in the works. So Fremont Park is already there. We're reimagining it. Uh, Roseland Park is already there. We're, you know, doing the master plan. So really not looking at uh, a big leap out for new land. We're really trying to rein it in and take care of the things that we're already on the docket to do. Um, so we'll definitely keep our eyes open and uh, the park maintenance team is rebuilding and we hope to keep that momentum going. So hopefully hopefully that's a little bit of silver lining there for you. <laughs> oh, Chair Quant, you're-, you're <laughs> you Excuse think? me, Logan, hold on a second. Um, Madonna, I can't see anything but the last four digits of your phone number. Did you want to chime in on anything? Madonna? Thank you. No, I, no. Thank you for the presentation. So I, I, I was able to see that through the email. Great. Um, but before we go, continue with the hands, I'm hoping before we're done today, we can lo loop back as a board and come up with board messages for our city council people that we take this beyond thanking James for his presentation, truly to um, how we can be 
um, an active board full of active advisory city council appointees rather than um, just containing this to ourselves, and that we have ideas to kick around before we sign off today. And with that, Logan. Yeah, I have an idea in that vein, Carol. James, do you track those maintenance requests by park? Like, do you have a tally? So uh, when I came over, so we, what we call them are, are charge numbers or org numbers. And uh, for park maintenance, one org number existed for the whole system. So it's, a, it's really a terrible way of tracking how things are done. So I've been working with our ASO, which is our, uh, our human resources representative, to create a charge number for each one of the parks so we can track exactly how much money is spent in every park, whether it's by a maintenance staff or outside contractor or anything that's done, we can track all of that. So it's not something that was previous in, previously in place, but it will be very soon. That's great. I think those, so here's some suggestions for me for how to get the city council's attention. I think that you should definitely track the maintenance costs per park. I think you should also do that per council district. Yeah, and do. I'd recommend doing the number of complaints per district. And if you really want to get fancy, do that as a per capita basis, um, just so they can get a better idea of how many of their constituents, because I know that they'll listen to us uh, because they respect our opinions, um, but they'll also listen to their constituents closely. So that would be kind of my political advice for you to get their attention is just really drill down um, into the districts and present that information on a regular basis to the council. Yeah, great, great advice. Thank you very much. Yep. On that note, um, I, I hate to have you do nothing but run spreadsheets, but um, this park is this many acres. Here's how much time had to be spent here. I should assume that, would assume that the time spent at Howarth Park would be disproportionate much more than say um, North Street Park, which is one acre. It could be either amenity based, somehow flesh it out. Um, I, I just a very small aside, and I think I already shared this with you, James. Cynthia Rich and I met at Dutch Floor. And um, that was Cynthia's, here, let me throw everything at you at once, um, introduction to the Board of Community Services. But while we were there on a lovely afternoon, a park maintenance worker showed up in a truck. He waved, which was great. We waved back. He went over and, Cynthia, do you think he swept up some glass? Was that? He did. Yeah. Yes. So our hope was he was going to do some other stuff, but nope, he swept up the glass, got back in his truck and left. Um, first, I was thrilled that he waved and made eye contact with us. My second thought was, your parks at work. And my third thought was our tax dollars not being really efficiently used if this guy came out from corporate yard to clean up some glass. Um, does that kind of thing happen? Will that be part of the tracking? Um, I, I, I can understand um, where you're coming from. I would say that I think that's a little bit presumptuous. Our, our folks try to address safety concerns as quickly as possible. So they're on their routes taking care of their parks and every one of their parks is on a schedule for maintenance and so they don't change that schedule up when we address safety concerns if there's glass or a safety concern it's you know it's in your district you're going to go take care of it and then you're going to get back to what you have pre-scheduled for your day so we're going to track as much as we possibly can and we're going to categorize every one of our requests you know with numbers it's a it's a number one meaning an emergency get to it right now um, versus a number three which is the maintenance of the park and we're going to get that on the rounds but to be frank most of what we're doing right now is reactive maintenance we would love to be doing preventative maintenance and taking care of our parks at another level but that's just not the the time we're in So I don't see any more hands raised. Um, at this point, um, 
I would love to discuss whether or not we as city council appointees have a desire to, an ability to, time to, or an interest in taking a more active role in trying to um, foster volunteer programs in the parks in our districts, or possibly in districts that are not our districts. Um, you can represent a park that you don't happen to live in. Uh, and you can have one foot in each of two districts. Terry. Um, yes, I, and in fact, um, this neighbor of mine who has been so incredibly proactive and has reached out to the neighborhood via next door, um, that was going to be my first step following this meeting. Um, assuming I had a good sense of what the timing could be in terms of forming a volunteer group. So um, I plan to do that, uh, reach out to my neighbors via next door and uh, join with this person who's already begun uh, some park maintenance tasks. And I think she's doing it, James, in coordination with your team. I don't think she's doing it independently, but um, so yeah, I plan to do that knowing that the timing is okay to go forward and make those connections and see what the interest is in the neighborhood. Thank you. Oh, Chair Quant, you're still muted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, will someone from Parks or from Rec be sending out the protocols for how we can help facilitate the um, either the reestablishment or the furthering of these groups. I too would love to be using um, next door and um, community bulletin boards as well as just talking with people who are frequenting their parks for hey, we can do this, but but we need to play within the framework. And I'm not quite sure what the framework for establishing new volunteer groups or even revitalizing um, groups that already exist. I'd be happy to send you guys a link um, once everything is established and we have all the guidelines in place, if that's what you desire. So I would love to hear from some other board members as far as their um, desire and ability to foster potential volunteer programs um, in their community, in their district, and reaching out to their city council person to play with us. Okay. Um, so, uh, Perhaps thinking about this, this is something that we could possibly revisit. I'm hoping people will reach out to their city council people and ask them their thoughts. Um, I know the budget is established for calendar for the fiscal year through next June, correct, Jen? Right, that's correct. It's fiscal year, so yeah, already yeah. next uh, June 30th. Uh, but there's always uh, opportunities for mid-year budget adjustments. Um, you never know. You never know what could happen. <laughs> but it's set. It's set. So um, think about it. If, if anyone does um, have some success, I would love to, for them to share it with this board um, next month. Um, I'll just come right out and tell you, I'm already involved in the best park and the best volunteer group in town. And um, I don't really like to toot my own horn, but we had 28 people in the rural cemetery on Saturday, including a certain man in a white collared shirt and his family. And we had an awful lot of fun, got an awful lot of work done. Those people will be back 
The Boy Scouts troop number, I forget, but the Boy Scouts name is the Zombie Patrol. And they not only cut down a non-native, but they found a footstone for people who died in 1904. That footstone will be reunited with a 20 year old mother and her one day old son who died in 1904. And they will get a nice letter of thank you. They'll get a write up in our newsletter. And that Boy Scout troop feels really good about themselves as did the other volunteers who showed up that day. Uh, people like to help. They just need some motivation. Um, one time Victoria Fleming showed up to a work party and the, uh, the guy who leads our group, he talked about her for like the next six meetings. I can't believe she actually showed up. Nobody else from city council have actually, she actually got her hands dirty. So people recognize when their um, board members show up, they recognize when their city council people show up and um, they, they like being appreciated. And um, there's a certain ownership of parks that make them better places that we really are in a position to foster and I feel like I'm preaching. So I'm done. Any other comments uh, or questions for item 7.1? And Chair, I don't think we have a lot of attendees that aren't staff, but if you wanna open it up to the community, <laughs> there might be somebody I'm missing. Do we have any questions or comments from the public on item 7.1? Chair Quant, I see no hands up. Great. So um, with that, we are gonna move on to committee reports. There was no mayor's luncheon. Um, Logan, I think he was in Ireland or Scotland at that point for a Scotland. family. So hopefully there will be a mayor's uh, luncheon next month. And the um, waterways committee also did not meet, but there is a waterways meeting tomorrow and we are revisiting a housing project on Old Stony Point Road, which borders one of the reaches of, I think Colgan Creek, I could be wrong, um, but that's what's going on with the Waterways Committee. Do we have any written or electronic communications to share? Deputy Santos. Chair Quant, we received no written or electronic communication. Okay. Um, future agenda items. Besides next month, I promise we will do a round of introductions. Terry, I see your hand up. Yeah, um, uh, just a couple of ideas. Um, one, uh, not I don't think is at all time sensitive, but I thought it would be nice to invite uh, the chair or a member of the uh, Parks Foundation to come and um, brief our board on what uh, activities they currently have going and, and how we might um, help them in their goals and and vice versa. I, um, I don't think we've done that for a while, so I think that would be uh, a great to, to meet those folks and hear what they're doing. And then the um, other item I thought we might consider is in past years and odd numbered years, the city clerk's office and the city attorney's office would do a very large training for new board and commission members on the Brown Act, um, conflicts of interest and Rosenberg's rules of order. And in talking with the city clerk, um, that is not going to happen this year for understandable reasons. So, um, but she did offer that uh, someone from the city attorney's office and the clerk's office could come to our board and give us that overview. So. I'd like to make that request uh, when the timing's appropriate, since we now have a full board. I've noted that down and um, also turning back to Chair Quant, I know that Jeff Tibbetts uh, is stepping in where our former Deputy Director of Recreation left off with our uh, Santa Rosa Parks Foundation, and it looks like he might have some information for us. So we'd like to call on him. Yes, hello, can you hear me? 
Perfect. Um, so I did want to just chime in on the uh, Parks Foundation um, between the work kind of wrapping up that they did for fundraising for Coffee Park and the, the fire recovery. And then with COVID and everything, they have not been actively meeting um, recently. Um, Kelly kind of passed them off to me. We've had a couple conversations. They're, they're just kind of starting to try to re revamp. So I think great to bring them forward to this committee, but I think that's probably still at least a few months out until they really have something to report to you guys. Thank you for that, Jeff. On that note, um, I would also like to um, further the, um, the thought of having some interaction between the Board of Community Services and CAB, the Community Advisory Board. I think um, we're, there's going to be um, some discussion of some overlap in um, sitting in on each other's meetings and so much of what happens at community uh, the Community Advisory Board meetings involve parks or could take place in parks and to um, to foster for us to foster each other either by having um, shared members or at least communication between the two so that we're aware of each other's events and can foster each other's events. Steve. Yes, sir. are you referring to the general plan update? I was speaking more in in general when I attend the mayor's lunch. Oftentimes, um, Leslie Grace will talk about things that CAB is doing, and I look at them through the Board of Community Services lens and say, "Whoa, that could have happened at a park," or "Whoa, recreation could have been just just to have a different perspective." It it wasn't um, specific to the general plan. My my thoughts, but but. Um, to add to the conversation, most definitely. So are there, just curious, are there more than one community advisory uh, uh, committee in the city? As far as I know, it is the largest board. There's, um, and they have a number of subcommittees. Um, I don't know if uh, different board, I can't, I can't answer this one. Okay. Jen, could you address that? I, I don't think that there is another board, is another board like, like that. Um, I'm looking it up right now as we speak and just to make sure I can um, look at that. But yeah, I, yeah, I do not see um, anything else that is this, this similar to the um, community advisory board. The rest of them are very specific in 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 my mind. But if you uh, if you want to search them yourselves, there's also um, a way to look up city boards on the city uh, city's just basic srcity.org website. There's a boards and commissions under city council, and there's yeah. a whole list of them. But there's like the bicycle and pedestrian advisory body, things like that. They're a little more specific to a topic, whereas the community advisory board is a little more wide open, very similar to the board of community services. All the board, this board, um, has uh, free, has more yeah. in the in later years been uh, focused on rec and parks. The, the reason I was asking, uh, if if you're referring to the community advisory committee that's focused on the general plan update. And you were mentioning there may be benefits of cross fertilization, for example. Uh, I just wanted this board to know that I'm on that committee. So you sound like a great point person, Steve. Um, I, I, also know that you're new to that board as well. Um, do you feel up to speed on everything the community advisory board's doing at this point? I'm sorry, could you say that again, please? Do uh, you, your association with CAB is probably about the same? Yes. Span as, so 
um, would you would you be comfortable functioning as um, could you report in on all things? Do your ears perk up when anything that might involve park and rec comes before cab or are you still getting your feet wet in that board as well? Um, yes and no, way I can dodge that. Uh, I was the chairman of the Planning and Transportation Commission in Mission Viejo when the city revised its general plan. So I'm very comfortable with, because I led the general plan revision in that city. Uh, I've been on that committee here in Santa Rosa a little longer than this board, but um, I think that's probably a question for Andy. I think that he's the one who would, you know, probably make that decision or offer the, that information rather than me right now saying I can represent that committee here. That, I think that'd be a little out of line for me to, to do that. Uh, but please know that, you know, parks is a, is a major part of the general plan update. As is transportation, housing, you know, everything, this is the city's strategic plan for the next 20 years. So of course, parks is a big part of it. And uh, Andy is quite experienced in this and highly respected as his entire team is. So um, I would suggest that maybe Jen talk to Andy and see if that's something that's proper or beneficial or just have a conversation and see what, see what shakes out. Because I'm, it's not only um, you know, uh, this uh, a general plan committee reaching out to parks and reaching out to transportation, reaching out to finance, reaching out to anybody who has anything to do with promoting the city or tourism or housing or, you know, I'm, I'm sure that staff is coordinating this in house. Um, so anyway, that's my long winded answer to a short question. So, so my uh, suggestion had to do with the community advisory board that's chaired by Leslie Graves at this point. It's not the master plan review community advisory committee. I was, I, I, my thought was that the board of community services that I currently chair have some overlap with the community advisory board currently chaired by Leslie Graves. Okay, sorry. I was thinking the Community Advisory Committee. Good enough. Um, I, I saw a couple of hands raised earlier. I'm guessing are... Terry and I, we're, we're gonna try to clear that up. Yep. Uh, any other items to consider for the agenda moving forward. Okay, with that, I would like to one more time welcome Cynthia. I would like it um, for the board through staff to reach out one more time to Pamela Van Halsema and thank her for her extended. I don't know if everyone knows Pamela was last appointed by Julie Combs. Pamela has been um, sticking with this board long after Julie Combs left city council. And um, Pamela was always more than present. She was a vital member of this board who, um, who really be believes in Santa Rosa and all things park and rec and um, as a board Member, I truly appreciate the time she spent with us. But Cynthia, you got big shoes to fill, but you can do it. I'm gonna do my best. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I can say that the next scheduled meeting of the Board of Community Services is September 22nd at four o'clock. And at 524, six minutes shy, of 5.30, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having me. Hey, James, you still there? Goodbye. James? I am. Hey, um, call me. Okay, I will.
Thank you.